Radio. Check one, two, Flavor Flav in the building. And you know who you listening to? The Three Point Conversion. Flavor Flav in the building. Hey, Kyrie. Um, I wanted to ask about the uh, hack a shack on Lively. Uh, Coach Kidd said you told him to just not worry about running away, just take the foul, shoot it. Uh, can you talk about were that? Were those his exact words? Not quite, but something. Oh, were his exact words, just, just to be clear. Something along those lines. Just, <laughs> yeah, what did you say? No, I want to know exactly. Do you remember? He said your message was to tell Lively to take the foul and shoot the free throw. Yeah, what did it look like for you guys when he was running? <laughs> yeah, I just wonder what the fans were thinking too. Uh, I actually didn't see him running around <laughs> until after the, uh, the. I didn't see the clip until after the game, but uh, we came back to the, the bench, and I was just like, "Man, you, you don't have to do all that. Just let them foul you, accept it, take it as a compliment, um, and go up there and knock down your free throws, man. We believe in you. We know you put in a lot of reps. So, uh, although he is a rookie, I think going up there, he showed a lot of poise. He, he showed a lot of his uh, preparation, his confidence, and. Um, whether he makes or misses, I, I feel like that's a good opportunity for us. Um, you know, kind of shows where we are as a team, especially in the half court or playing in transition. Uh, from the res uh, I'm talking about the respect from the OKC team, where they don't want us to play in half court, uh, so they go to the hack of hack of uh, Derek Lively, and um, it worked out in our favor tonight. So, I just want him to go up to that line and shoot confidently. Kyrie, what can you just say about the impact, Sweat. Pete? Uh, my bad. Uh, so I know. No, you good. What, kind of, what can you say about the impact PJ has been able to make the last two games, and honestly, really overall since he's got here for you guys? Uh, PJ has been spectacular, um, you know, since he got here, like you said, and um, I think he's he's been able to find his niche, find his role, and uh, accept that uh, he's somebody that we need to go to in this series to be effective. Uh, once we threw it down to him in the post and got him some opportunities on the three-point line, uh, he's been doing well with the reps that he's been getting, the attempts that he's been getting, and uh, he's alleviating a lot of pressure off of me and Luca and, and the rest of the guys on the team. So whenever guys can step up like that, especially in a playoff environment, it works well for us. And um, when our whole team is playing well and other guys are stepping up, uh, the game is beautiful to not only watch but be a part of as a competitor. Kyrie, I wanted to ask one more about a um, about, uh Derek Lively and you know like like you said it, it can be really easy sometimes to forget how young he is um, you know you guys are sending him out there and you know you know even even switching on to Thunder player something he didn't do a lot of in the regular season what does that speak to you know just the what you've seen from him his ability to learn and pick up stuff and just react uh, so quickly man there's a lot of compliments there man yeah that's that's what he deserves for sure uh you know, that, that's something that we, we talk to him about, um, but I, I think the coaches do a, a great job as well of um, continuing to keep him prepared, continuing to feed him confidence. And us as players, we just want to surround him with the wisdom, the knowledge of what's happening, what's going on out there on the floor, um, and also protect him. You know, we also we, we understand that he's 20 years old and we're asking him to do um, – you know, a lot of things out there for us defensively and then offensively we're asking him to make uh, big decisions in uh, hostile environments or you know when we're at home and the game is pretty close so uh, we just want to continue to feed him good energy and uh, you know since the regular season and when he's been healthy he's been an anchor for us um, numerous occasions where he's won us basketball games so uh, you know, that's just the, the tale of our team this year is uh, we have a lot of special guys that have unique skill sets. And when they're playing at the top of their game, um, it's a joy to watch. It's a joy to be a part of. Kyrie, you had a flurry of baskets there in the fourth quarter, including the left hand floater um, to kind of ice the game. I think on the broadcast, you said that you had a coach come up to you and say you wish you would have got going a little bit sooner. Um, just what goes into your mind when you're finally getting it going and why are you so comfortable in those moments? It's basketball, man. I, I think, uh, you know, I've been able to learn that, uh, you know, from people that are sitting on the sidelines see different things. So uh, I respect their opinion, um, you know, but also as a player, as a hooper uh, who's seen numerous series, who's been in a lot of different battles, who has failed at the highest level, uh, you know, reading the game is just as important as, you know, forcing yourself into things. So. Uh, for me, in the first half, I just felt like there were some opportunities off the pick and roll I could have taken advantage of. Um, I didn't, um, but it was still a one-point game, you know, and uh, I think my confidence uh, in my teammates during those stretches goes to ultimate high uh, because I need them and they need me. But 
uh, I also understand the gravity that I pull and uh, also utilizing myself as, I don't really like the word decoy at all, but being out there to uh, be ready to make an impact when my number's called. You know, we got guys that score at a very high level. I score at a very high level, but sometimes in playoff games, it's not going to be like that. And, you know, one thing that I always like to tell people is just go watch some of the games in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. I don't know how the NBA game has changed in terms of perspective that people see and want to see star players score a bunch of points and force a bunch of stuff. But, you know, you look at some of the greatest teams, you know, that have played and won championships. A lot of guys have been selfless and a lot of guys have been willing to, you know, just read the game and, and give what the game needs. So if my job is to play defense that night and that's what I'm geared towards and I feel like that's what my intention is to get us a win and that's where it's going to be. It's not going to be, you know, trying to delegate my offensive prowess to force myself into the game. It's going to come, man. I, I feel like I'm one of the most unguardable people in the world, just like, you know, the rest of my peers feel, you know, it's just the confidence. But in the playoffs, you don't have time to wallow in, you know, the extra thoughts of offense, 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 you know, defense wins championships. So. If I could have a quick follow up, when did you kind of learn that lesson in your career? That when did I learn it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost a few games in my career, man, and, and dealt with uh, the pushback. And uh, I think the difference between me now and, um, you know, me a few years ago is just, you know, allowing those external voices to infiltrate to what I believe the game is for me, you know, and I've been taught by some of the best of the best, so I need to trust that. You know, sometimes, uh, this, you know, social networks can get in the fray of, of like what you should be doing and I think that's a dangerous place to be so I like to be surrounded with masters of the game masters that are going to give me um, you know truth about the basketball game and how I can continue to be better and it's time to move forward. Kairi, similar question in this play you just scored the most of your points in the second half is that part of your plan or it is because the flow of the game or you reading the game so yeah, it's just reading the game. Uh, it's just reading it at a very high level and then understanding who we have on our team and uh, making sure my teammates feel confident going into halftime. Uh, it's a very unique series. It's, it's not Every series is going to be different. It's going to be different challenges, different obstacles. So just got to approach it that way and uh, be willing to adapt. Kyrie, with all you've accomplished in your career, what more do you have to show the world about Kyrie, the ball player? What motivates you? What continues to motivate you at this point in your career? You, are you talking about right now where we are or just, just when general. I wake up every day? Yeah, just in general. Uh, but basketball-wise, what more do you have to prove or show about you as a ball player? Uh, I don't think it's so much about proving anything. I, I, I believe it's just putting um, the basketball game in perspective. I think Josh Hart had a tremendous quote. Uh, where he talked about, you know, people having 12 hour shifts and we get to go out there and play a game that we love. And, you know, I think that was like right the nail right on the head for a lot of us in the way we feel. Um, that doesn't take away from our competitive spirit and what we want to accomplish as, uh, you know, legacy members of the NBA. Uh, a lot of us, and I'll say this for a lot of us peers, sometimes we forget that we're the top of the top. We have ascended here because of a lot of hard work. Um, we've ascended here because we've sacrificed a lot of family time. We've ascended here because we've done little things in order to be great teammates and to be recognized as some of the most special, most talented players in the world. So uh, that's one thing, you know, that I feel like I could lay my hat on is just being one of those people. But I think on the opposite side, it's just understanding that the next generation is watching. And I want them to have this game to appreciate as an art space and not just business, business, business. Um, you know, you should enjoy it. You should enjoy the competition. You should enjoy going against the best of the best. And I don't want to overspeak here, but uh, for me personally, that's just where my focus has been getting up every day is looking at my kids, looking at my wife, looking at the kids that are still playing basketball. Um, and it teaches you about teamwork. It teaches you about leadership. It teaches you about exercise. It teaches you about dieting. It teaches you about life. And that's why I picked up the basketball. It wasn't to be bombarded. Um, all the time, wherever I go, I hate the celebrity worship. I hate the adultery. I hate all that stuff that comes with the extra nuances of being a, you know, quote unquote famous person in the NBA. So, again, it's it's just about leading the next generation and understanding that I gotta stay poised through the chaos and hate out here. So that's that's really where my my head lays. We know Lucas is dealing with a lot physically right now, and and this wasn't one of those games where he got in a great shot making groove. What what did you think about his impact? You know, in a game that wasn't kind of his his typical flow. What do you mean? Typical form? What do you mean? Just I mean, you know, like, 34 and... 
eight and nine? Are you talking about that? Or? Right. And, and like I said, it wasn't a game that he was able to dominate yeah. as a as a scorer. What, mm-hmm. what, do you, what do you think about his impact despite that? Uh, I think he used his voice uh, very well tonight, and you can tell he wanted to win. And that's all we need from Luca. We, we know he's going to um, you know, be who he is and attack. But for us, it's just continuing to feed him that energy that he can trust who he's around, and he can trust that when the ball leaves his hands that other good things are going to happen. Uh, great players really feel like they have to initiate themselves at times in the beginning of the game or at the end of the game. I feel like he's figured that out to a certain degree, and it's up to us to continue to mold that greatness alongside him where you know, no matter if he scores a lot or not, our team is going to win, and that's where we're putting our best foot forward is the energy towards that. And, you know, Instead of looking at, you know, oh, man, Luka's not scoring a bunch of points, it's like you know, we have other guys that can contribute as well and want to contribute, and when it's Luka's time to take over, we allow him to take over. When it's my time to take over, it's my time to take over. PJ's time. So everybody gets a, a certain two-minute span where if they make one shot, we're coming back to you. So that's the NBA playoffs. Get used to that. I know you're used to that, but... Um, that's the, where we feel most confident and comfortable is when it's our guy's time, we want to celebrate him and continue to feed him that confidence. So it's not just on Luca, it's on all of us. Is it, uh, it seems pretty high on the physicality <laughs> scale out there. Uh, is it a beating? Is it, because it, it kind of looks that way from afar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you're seeing out there, yeah, we're definitely feeling it. Um, you know, but I, I think that's what makes all of this, um, uh, you know, uh, mean a lot more is because you're sacrificing a, a lot of that, um, you know, time that you would spend with your family or friends and you're recovering and you're resting and you're trying to get ready mentally and spiritually, emotionally, physically for a beating, as you say, um, you know, but going against this Thunder team is a great test and I'm enjoying it. I know my teammates are enjoying it too. So got a lot of respect for them, but uh, we know how we have to play against them. Oh. Kyrie, um, with Luca having someone where he's getting pestered a lot, you know the NBA playoffs as well as anyone. My just kind of two questions: How do you feel like Luca is handling the physicality? And then secondly, what have you done so well in your career that helps you stay poised in those moments when someone's trying to get under your skin? Uh, well, first with with Lou Dort uh, pressuring uh, Luca, uh, that's that's uh, part of their game plan. So uh, that shouldn't be anything that surprises us anymore at this point. We kind of expect him to play like that and, and also uh, be an anchor for their defense alongside Chet and Jalen and Shea. They're, they're a good defensive team and uh, they get their hands on a lot of loose basketballs pretty often. So we just try to affirm to Luca, just keep attacking him, play through the physicality, play through the contact as you've always done. And I think that makes him better. Um, you know, I think he responds very well to it. Uh, he's going to make some shots. He's going to miss some shots, but I like him continuing to attack. And uh, for me, uh, to answer your second question, just staying poised, again, it's just the experience and being a lot of playoff series and understanding what it takes to get the best out of my teammates and them getting the best out of me and sticking to the game plan and doing the little things to get wins. Kyrie, I don't know that I can sit here and say that the light has come on for P.J. Washington because it's not like he hasn't scored in bunches before in his career. But two games back to back like this in the playoffs is not nothing. Is there something from your perspective that you've noticed, whether it's his demeanor, whether it's how he's attacking certain moments on the floor? Is there something that you can point to that, hey, that's that's different? Yeah, I uh, well, I, I believe that when you're an offensive player or you know you're playing on the court, uh, and you start off the game with a make or a post up, or we go to you right away to start off the game, it does something for your confidence and. Uh, you know, does something for him energetic wise. You can tell he, he runs up and down the court feeling even better about himself. So to see him shoot well, um, he starts the game off well. Um, he starts, uh, you know, an unbelievable defensive matchup on who he's going against. So I think he's just engaged. Uh, it's not like we haven't seen him engaged, but when he starts hitting shots, you know, then those little things on the defensive end start to um, be a lot tougher on the opposing player because that confidence goes hand in hand. And I feel like he's a good two-way player for us. Uh, and now I think he's proven it. Um, they're leaving him open. He's open for a reason, right? That was part of their game plan. So we have to make them pay for that. Uh, now that he's had two good games, we have to expect in game four that they're going to come out with a different adjustment. And uh, just want to continue to feed him confidence and uh, keep that right elbow tucked when he's shooting those threes because it looks beautiful right now. It looks beautiful.